cheese came through again. We got a box full of 800 to 1,000 count boxes here. Um, looks like mostly from the 80s, um, possibly early 90s. We have this plastic tote full of randomness. First look here. Oh my goodness, there's some Super Nintendo games over here. Uh, we'll get into that in a little bit. Let's take a look. Welcome back to Zach Collect Stuff. So, with that intro, obviously Cheese is my dad's friend who owns the storage locker facility. Um, and he, as my dad was helping him clean out another locker, um, this was just kind of remnants from another locker that he had cleaned out prior. And uh, more cards coming my way. If you don't remember Cheese or the kind of the cards that I've gotten from him in the past, uh, my very first videos was a collection of comic cards. And uh, those all came from Cheese and the locker that he cleaned out. And uh, my dad basically kind of fell into these cards and they've, uh, through discussion and whatever else, figured out that I collect. And so um, I keep getting these little extra nuggets of um, collections uh, from him once in a while. So I'm going to walk you through what I find in this little mini collection. And uh, yeah, should be some fun. So nice little midweek, end of the week, um, digging through some collections. So let's have some fun. All right, let's get to the haul. So start out with this. You may have seen it on top of the tote when I opened that up, but a 1965 University of Michigan and California game day program, official souvenir program. Uh, pretty cool. Um, I've kind of looked through it a little bit. I don't remember any of the names that are inside here. Um, and being a Michigan fan, like you would kind of think that I would have heard like, oh, this guy in 1965 was a great player. Um, like it has the varsity squad listed on here. I don't know if there's any names that you, uh, recognize from the 1965. Michigan varsity football team, but still just a cool piece of uh, Michigan football memorabilia, and Michigan football is huge, obviously. I mean, I'm in Indiana now, but uh, as a Michigan fan, like, you can always find a home for that, those programs and stuff. But that, there was this little souvenir Louisville Slugger, uh, kind of dirty, chipped up a little bit, but cool little Johnny Bench souvenir bat, like that a lot. But um, we'll start with just the piles of cards. So, and then we'll get to the good stuff towards the end. Found a stack of 1994, 93, and 92 Upper Deck Soccer. And the only name that I could recognize, um, Kobe Jones. I remember just from back in the 90s hearing his name. He was kind of the face of American soccer. Like him and Alexi Lawless were like the big names. But um, the other stacks that I made here, I'm not going to spend too much time on them. But I have stacks of football, basketball, and baseball. And basically they are just um, inserts, Hall of Famers, stars. Um, and it's all 90s stuff. It's like late 80s, early 90s. The, the junk era continues, right? Um, but this is kind of just the stuff that was included in there, like a Carl Malone insert set. Cool Dominique William, uh, Wilkins, the human highlight reel. Love watching him dunk. Um, this great college david robinson right but that's what that stack is um for basketball really none of the huge names uh, there's a couple um like these were great i love these cards back in the day the Fleer ultra the dunk cards were some of my favorites the sean kemp one was always one of my favorites just because of the pose it's awesome um but that's what that whole stack good is. names and then this back part is all um, 1990 NBA hoops, 89-90 NBA hoops. And then I have similar stacks in, in football and in baseball. Um, just these stacks that are Hall of Famers. Like there's a stack of a bunch of different Jerome Bettis rookies, um, Drew Bledsoe, names that I heard of. There are a few decent, like... Uh, insert cards Deion Sanders I just liked him because he played baseball and football 
Andre Risen rookie. I was hoping to see the Barry Sanders rookie here, but uh, that didn't come to fruition. So just a bunch of those big-name quarterbacks. Uh, Montana. There's some Steve Young in here. Cool Tim Brown, Quadre Ismail. Is that Rocket or Quadre? I don't know. If it's the same person, I don't know. Oh, Rahab. Rocket. Yep. Um, so that's a cool insert there. I like that one. But a lot of the big names from football in the 1990s are in this stack here. Emmett Smith, so on and so forth. And then similar stack here for baseball. Got the big old Cecil Fielder rookie card right on front. Not in great condition, but every time I find Cecil Fielder cards, I always put them aside and put them in the Tigers PC, even though he's not in a Tigers uniform in this one. But just a stack of... Oh boy, I dropped the entire stack, or half of it anyways. Nice stack of Hall of Famers. These are 10 cent cards that I'm gonna toss in the 10 cent box and they'll probably sit there forever because nobody really collects the 1990s stuff that's just base cards. I've always liked that Rob Aventura rookie card too. Maybe I just like the number one draft pick logo on there. But so that's the similar thing there with with baseball. All that the uh, basketball, football, and baseball, all similar type stacks, Hall of Famers, stars, and uh, some inserts in there. So now I will get to um, kind of the stacks of specific things. Oh yeah, full transparency. My dad already went through these cards, and so he pulled out a few of the cards that uh, that he wanted to keep, um, and then he kind of passed it on to me without kind of letting me know everything that he found in there. So um, some of the non-baseball stuff. I got a couple hockey cards. Patrick Waugh, Marc Messier, some of the better names from the, set from the 90s. The basketball cards that we found. This cool Bulls checklist. It's got Jordan on the front there, so that's great. I used to love these USA inserts. I remember I had a Carl Malone one just like this. Uh, but the Clyde Drexler, so that's a nice dollar, two dollar card. Cool David Robinson insert. This nice SP1 that's in terrible condition. 1992 SP1 with Magic Johnson on the back, Larry Bird on the front. And then some of these Fanimation cards. And these are some of my favorite ones. Um, favorite basketball cards i remember these when i was a kid i don't remember ever having the jordan ones but i remember definitely the mailman one um the mutombo warrior one which was pretty awesome the bird man larry bird there in the middle and then we have the agent 23 and uh bird man larry bird michael jordan and then of course the best one that you can pull out of there the agent 23 michael jordan um so those are definitely cool i like those a lot Best basketball cards, and then there was a 93-94 Flair Ultra Michael Jordan in the mix there. So, pretty cool there. Those are the basketball cards that were kind of worth something. Put these somewhere over here. Oh, forgot to show you. There was a White Caps souvenir baseball in this dirty, dirty plastic. So, I'm going to open that up probably decrease the value of it or increase the value of it because i finally took it out of that dirty plastic but dog days of summer i'll probably just give this to my son let him hit it around in the backyard but we'll put it over there actually what i'm going to do here i'm going to put a couple of these I'll put this fanimation michael jordan card on the stage up here all right some of the football cards that we found here a bunch of jerome bettis rookies there's a michael strahan rookie in there um, not really worth a ton, a buck or two a piece. This one might be worth 2 to $3, maybe, I don't know. Strahan, another Bettis, 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 Bettis. Some cool inserts, Emmett Smith, Joe Namath, Bradshaw. There's Jim McMahon. These were just some vintage ones that I saw. They're from 1983, and they were just names that I had heard before. John Riggins, Ron Jaworski, Dave Craig. Jim Plunkett. This is a vintage one that I kind of set aside. Terrible condition, but somebody will probably pick that up for uh, 10 cents or so if I put it out of the show. Anthony Carter, Jim Zorn, Dan Fouts, uh, Carl, George Rogers, Riggins, Archie Manning. 
and a couple Tony Dorsett cards. So those are the football cards that I found in the mix that were actually worth something. Not just a typical baseball. I have virtually zero football cards in my personal collection, except for Barry Sanders, because he was like the only football player that I liked growing up. Um, obviously, I was more baseball and more hockey in our house, but um, got a few PC football cards, ones that I'll just toss in my Barry Sanders lot. Um, just some common base cards. Jason Hansen is, I think he's the all-time points leader for the Lions, or was. I'm not sure if he still is, but... Barry Sanders, I remember this insert. I had that myself. This is a really cool one. It's got Emmett Smith and Barry Sanders at the Pro Bowl. I like that one a lot. A couple more base cards, base cards. This really neat Dion Sanders where it's half baseball uniform, half football uniform. thought that was really neat. And then two nice Barry Sanders Stadium Club cards at the end to finish that off. So those are my PC football cards. Some baseball cards that I pulled for the PC, guys that I collect. Cal Ripken Jr., Griffey Jr., Travis Fryman. I know Travis Fryman is kind of a name that you're like, wow, you collect Travis Fryman, but he was my first favorite player. And uh, so when I see his cards, I always scoop them up or I put them, in a, uh, put them aside in a lot just to kind of hang on to them. Another Griffey there, another Travis Fryman. I used to love these black-bordered leaf cards with the gold. Those are really cool. Travis Fryman again couple more Ripken cards. And then these ones didn't really fit. So I'm not sure if my dad just threw in some of these 2008 baseball heroes because it didn't fit the timeline for any of the other cards that were in the lot. But uh, there was a Miggy, uh, Cal Ripken, and a Derek Jeter. And then, of course, another Ripken at the end there. And here I got a few more cool things. Um, one of the neat things that we found... And he was telling me about these. I said, just kind of put them all together in a lot, and I'll look through them. Um, these Sports Illustrated for Kids cards from the 90s. This is from, I can't remember what year these ones are. Anyways, these were obviously in the Sports Illustrated for Kids magazines, and they were in a nine-card sheet or a six-card sheet most of the time. Maybe these ones were four. I don't know. But uh, you would have to tear them in order to kind of separate the cards. So a lot of times, if you find these, they're in terrible condition or they have paper loss on the back, like this one, because they're really tough to, uh, to tear apart, the perforation. But there are some of these that are super valuable. Um, like if you find the Mia Ham, the Mia Ham is ridiculously valuable um, for, for a, um, a magazine card anyways. But a lot of these ones are just kind of odd ones. Um, a bunch of like off sport ones, swimming, running, volleyball, racing, uh, wind, board sailing, track and field stuff. And then I put the, the main sport ones towards the end. But a lot of these are just a buck a piece. Um, see, that's what this is what happens most of the time when I was tearing them because I was spastic, I guess. But. And then I put at the end some of these that are worth more than just a dollar. Like these ones here, this Mike McGill. Looks like it sells for about four to five bucks. This Jerry Rice and Joe Montana, same thing, about three to five bucks for both of those there. Monica Sellis. This one actually has quite a few sold listings that are decent. Anywhere between five to ten, maybe even fifteen bucks. But of course on this one. The one that was kind of torn the worst out of all of them is that one. <laughs> of course, right? And then the one that kind of surprised me, Karch Karali. I know I've heard that name before, and I don't know why, but this one is actually worth a few bucks. So as a volleyball player, and it's in really good condition for being a perforated, torn card. Uh, I feel like the kid who ever tore it was very meticulous and careful. Um but that was kind of cool. So nice little find there on that one. I'm trying to find places to put all these cards. And then the last stack. These are cards that are worth a buck or two. Um, nice Piazza rookie, Piazza rookie. Chipper Jones prospect card. Another Chipper Jones and Ryan Klesko coming attractions. A Larry Walker rookie. Juan Gonzalez rookie. 
the infamous Billy Ripken, but not the error. This is the corrected one that has the black box on the bottom of the bat. Obviously, if you know what the actual one is, it has a profanity written on the end of the bat. Uh, you can Google that one yourself if you're interested in finding out what it says. But um, this is the corrected one. Still worth a couple bucks. If you have the actual error one, it's worth more than that. Um, I've always loved this card. Father and Son, Ken Griffey Jr. It's 1989 Bauman. Um, so it is his rookie year. Very cool card. I like that one a lot. And then a couple Chipper Jones, 891 uh, Upper Deck. This one surprised me. Now, I've seen a bunch of the Looney Tunes holograms from back in 1990, but this one seems to be a little bit more rare. There's number, uh, numerous solds that were $10 to $25. Um, so this one isn't just your tip, like your standard Bugs Bunny hologram. I don't know if it was an SP or I think there was like a nine-card hologram set or something. Um, but this one seems to be the more valuable one of the holograms. So really cool card there. I love the colors of it. So that one's cool. And then kind of the second coolest thing that we found is the stack of in-person autographs. I don't think this one is real because it's just a card that has a bunch of scribbling on it and it does not match Jeff Hornacek's um, signature. So, uh, but the rest of them, Leonard Russell, Barry Foster, Barry Foster again, Mo Vaughn. I'm trying to get the lighting decent so you can see some of them. Nice Matt Williams here. Thurman Thomas. Chris Carter. Terrell Buckley. I like how he signs T Buck 27. Steve Wilson. Is this Eric Metcalf? Yep. Eric Metcalf. Jimmy Key. I don't know what happened here. If the kid actually signed it or if it was actually Jimmy Key doing it. Or if Jimmy Key signed it there and somebody was trying to copy his signature there. But the ones that kind of have me interested here. The Brett Favre. And then two Troy Aikmans. Now, I've tried to look. And the Brett Favre actually looks like his signature. I know there's ways that you can authenticate them. Uh, you can go to JSA. Um, get them authenticated, and I've been looking, and these three might be the only ones that would actually be worthwhile to try have authenticated, but the two Troy Aikmans would be the ones that seem to be, and of course, this card has like a weird indentation in the top left corner, so the condition of the card is not great, but you can see the signature on there. Trying to catch the glare so you can see it. And the, the signature actually looks like his. But I don't know if it's actually legit. Or if a kid, like I said, just tried to practice it on here. Um, and that's the problem. This one, if it is legit um, and I get it slabbed, would be kind of valuable. Because it is his rookie card. And it is his rookie card. And... It is signed, so on well, the way I catch it in the light right there on camera, it looks definitely like it's signed, so we'll see. But so I think that's kind of what I have to do next is I have to get them authenticated. Um, hopefully they're real. If they are real, then I can maybe get them slabbed or I can have PSA do the authentication. But that was kind of the, the second coolest thing that we found was this stack of in-person autographs. Very cool. And it's tough to know. Like, it's tough to see. The only reason that I think they are legit or most of them are legit is because you look at the differences in penmanship and how they, like, the flow of their penmanship. Like, it's Barry Foster. And Barry Foster are very, very close. So that makes me think it is. But then again, you see, like, the Thurman Thomas looks a lot different than the T-Buck and the Chris Carter. So like, I would think that these are actually legit and the person that was getting them signed actually saw them in person somewhere and had them signed. So there's those. And then the last thing, and I teased it a little bit when I opened up um, the tote, 
there was three Super Nintendo games in the tote, in box, with manual. NCAA basketball. I'm going to try to be careful opening these up. In box, with manual, with everything in it. Games are in fantastic condition. So, now, these are not great games as far as value is concerned, but the fact that they are complete definitely helps. I mean, I'm going to have to figure that out later. But, oh, it fell in. I think. So there's NCAA Basketball. We have Bulls Blazers. Kind of bummed that it's not MJ on the cover there. But it's Pippin, so that's cool. Uh, Terry Porter there. So Horace Grant with the specs, you can see that. So Bulls versus Blazers. What year was this one? 91. So Bulls Blazers, very cool there. And then the last one, uh oh, that thing's falling over here. The last one is NHL 94. Again, all three of them are in box. Now, this doesn't have the insert like the other one did, but it's in box, and it has all of the literature with it. So, and I think whatever that poster is. But everything is in there. The game, the literature. So... Very cool find. Definitely unexpected when you look at kind of... It makes sense that it would be in there just because it kind of fits the mold of 90s sports collecting and a kid in the 90s. But definitely cool that we stumbled across this. Now that I have it in my possession, um, it's going to be kind of hard to let those ones go if and when I let them go. Um, but yeah. That's the haul that we got from this. Again, thanks to Cheese. Thanks to my dad for bringing these down here. And thank you guys for watching. Um, I enjoy going through these things on camera so I can watch them back later on when I'm old and I forget things. Um, but until next time, thanks for watching Zach Collect Stuff. See ya.